Hello everyone, welcome back to Lucky Crit. It's finally time for another news video, so I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Recently we've been getting some rumors and potentially leaks which supposedly reveal some of the things that we may expect to see showcased during Nintendo's E3 presentation this year. These leaks are coming from a well-known Nintendo leaker by the name of Zippo, and he's provided us with a little tidbit of news related to the next Fire Emblem title that we might be seeing. As far as Zippo's background, he has been known to be a pretty reliable leaker, or at least he used to be pre-2020 it seems, as during 2020 he did make some questionable calls, uh, especially with like Smash Bros DLC fighters for example. I think he even thought that Byleth was a third party character when he was first discussing the leaks, and so a lot of people were pretty disappointed at that because they thought that, you know, obviously we were getting another third party character, but Fire Emblem is clearly a first party IP for Nintendo. But with 2020 and the craziness of that year, I could see how that might have lended to it being not the most accurate year for news, especially with companies shuffling a lot of things around. So perhaps he was even right about more things than we knew, but you know, things have changed since then. But as always, I do want to say, please take this information with a grain of salt. It is fun, however, for us to speculate and try to put together the pieces and clues of what intelligence systems might be up to these days. But to get right into it, according to the leak, Intelligent Systems has reportedly been working on a Fire Emblem title that they're developing separately from Three Houses on their own. On top of that, the game is very close to nearing completion, meaning that an announcement at E3 and a release this year could be on the cards. So there's a couple of things that we can dig into here with this. First off, they specified in this leak that they've been working on a title separate from Three Houses on their own. So I feel like this is very important here because Fire Emblem Three Houses was co-developed with Koei Tecmo, uh, basically the creators of the Warriors games. So we had Intelligent Systems doing some parts of it, but to be honest, it did seem like a lot of the work was probably done by Koei Tecmo to make that game, as far as the engine stuff and all that. So it would actually make sense that they might not be doing that again, but also let's think back to the timeline of this stuff, right? So in 2017, in January, we got our first ever Fire Emblem Direct, which revealed to us uh, Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia, it showcased Fire Emblem Heroes, and it announced that a Fire Emblem Switch title was also in development. So that was a lot of huge news for us back then. But also, let's think about the years here. So 2017 was also the 25th anniversary of Fire Emblem Gaiden, which was pretty key, obviously, because then during that same 25th anniversary year, we also got Fire Emblem Echoes released that May. So it was first announced in that January, and then we got it in May. Pretty quick, you know, we had no idea what was coming from them at that point. It was a huge surprise. Um, some of you who might have been following me for a long time probably knew I mean, that's when I first really started covering Fire Emblem. I did have Fire Emblem videos on this channel before then, but it wasn't really like my main focus and that's really when this channel blew up, so that was a great time for me. Um, but I just want to highlight the similarities here between 2017 now and 2021. And the other thing I also wanted to make sure that we talk about here too is Echoes was completed in 2017. And what a lot of these companies do, especially Nintendo companies, they have multiple teams working on these games because it doesn't just take one year to pump out a game with your whole team, and you know, when that year's done, they move on to the next project. I mean, these games take years and years to complete, so they have multiple teams working in tandem on different staggered releases. So for example, if Echoes finished in 2017, that means that a lot of the folks that worked on Echoes might have had a new project to be working on since then, and now in 2021, maybe it's finally time for that project to launch. It is possible that, you know, some folks could have worked on both Three Houses and Echoes and maybe moved back and forth, but it really does seem like they probably had separate teams, and maybe that team that finished Echoes was also in charge of whatever this next project is. And now that'll also give some time for the other team, maybe continuing to work with Koei Tecmo, to work on another Fire Emblem Switch title that we could see later, but obviously we have no idea about that. Um, but it seems like the newer ones are probably going to be in charge of that team, at least for now. But this, considering the fact that you know, potentially this team worked on the previous remake, Echoes, I'd say that seems to fit pretty well with the idea that maybe their next project is now nearing completion, which would be whatever comes out this year. I also want to point out though, it's 2021, and this year marks the 25th anniversary of Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War, the fourth game in the series. It's a beloved title, and a lot of fans have been speculating that we might get a remake of this game for years now. I mean, after Echoes, it was, it was pretty obvious that that's the direction that they were going. First, we got the Fire Emblem 1 remake in Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. Then Japan got the Mystery of the Emblem remake with New Mystery of the Emblem. 
then Echoes. And so if you're, you know, going up the series chronologically, Genealogy is next. And it being the 25th anniversary of that game, I would say there would never be another more fitting year to see such a game happen. Uh, what is also interesting to think about, though, in relation to this, is if Koei Tecmo is not helping them co-develop this title, if this is a remake of Genealogy, I almost wonder what the graphics of this title are going to look like, because unless they have the rights to use the, you know, the assets that they co-developed with Koei Tecmo without Koei Tecmo and can continue building off that stuff and use the same engine as Three Houses and all of that, um, unless they can do that, which who knows contractually if they can or not, it sounds like this game is not going to look anything like Three Houses. Now, Echoes was a very beautiful game for the 3DS, but I'm wondering if this Genealogy remake is going to be a little bit more closer looking to that than it would be to Fire Emblem Three Houses. So that'll be really interesting to see from this title, and we'll have to kind of see what happens with, with E3 if we get you know a trailer or anything like that announced from them. But I just want to kind of prime your minds there because it might not look like Three Houses. It might not be the same style. It might not be the same engine. And I think that's definitely a, a very good possibility because if this game is not being co-developed with Koei Tecmo, I don't see how it's going to look the same as Three Houses did. And I can't imagine that Koei Tecmo would be very happy about Intelligent Systems just taking that engine and all those assets and kind of making their own stuff on top of it and, and kind of like leaving them in the dust, basically. After being co-partners for Three Houses, that would kind of stink for them as a company. So all of this stuff is really kind of lining up here. I mean, they've had four years since Echoes to put together whatever this might be, especially if it's that same team. It might be the same team who made the last remake, which would make a lot of sense. Um, graphics might be different, so maybe it's a little bit easier for them to do in-house. I don't know how that's going to translate to Switch graphics, but we have seen successful Switch titles like Octopath Traveler and stuff like that, and they used a little bit more of a, a pixel art kind of approach with some added effects and stuff and super lighting and things like that. So it's quite possible we might see something like that. I also want to kind of comment on the concept of a remake and maybe what we can expect to see changed or altered or anything like that. So if you think back to Fire Emblem Echoes, there was definitely some stuff that they were okay with tweaking when it came to the base formula of the game. For example, we got newer systems like combat arts, you know, they added in support conversations that weren't there before, of course. A whole bunch of little things like that. Obviously, the third-person dungeon navigation was, like, way more expanded. So they were definitely okay with trying out some different things with the formula with Echoes. However, they are also very, very traditional, and they do keep things very reminiscent of the original, at least in the sense of, like, the maps and everything, and they really do stay very faithful to that original game. So if you think back to Echoes, I mean, even I myself was speculating that they were probably going to update the maps because, I mean, some of those maps were horrendous Fire Emblem Gaiden maps that were literally just an entire screen of planes with, like, a little river in the center and a little bridge crossing. So, it, you know, I, to be honest, I had a really hard time seeing them not change maps like that and update them and kind of make them better, give them a better coat of paint. But then we all unfortunately found out when Echoes came out that they stayed perfectly faithful to the maps of the game and kept them, to our chagrin, exactly the same. So I kind of wanted to talk about Genealogy's maps here and think about that for a second because there's a lot of folks speculating about what they might do to that. You know, Genealogy is the first game in the series to have huge, massive maps that are not exactly expected for you to be able to play through them in one sitting, which is especially why they have a different save system too, where you can save at the beginning of the turns. Um, and a lot of folks I think are speculating now about whether or not they would change that or not. And I'm kind of sitting here after looking at Echoes feeling like there is no way they're going to change that at all. I feel like that's kind of one of the unique experiences when it comes to Genealogy. And considering how faithful they've been in the past, I think it's going to be exactly the same. Now, would they do anything else to make it more sped up or maybe, you know, break down these huge maps into like quadrants or something like that where you do one part at a time? I guess that's possible. But, you know, like I said, considering they didn't even alter even some of the worst maps in Gaiden for Echoes, I'm kind of feeling like they probably won't do very much on that front. They probably consider it to be like one of those unique things about genealogy and, and don't want to touch it. So if we are going to see a, you know, Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of the Holy War, or whatever it might be, uh, I would definitely expect to see the same maps and probably stay very faithful to the mechanics. Of course, that does mean that there might be some uh, feedback from fans maybe that don't like some of the old systems or the way that things are a little bit different in genealogy. For example, with trading items, 
with having to sell items basically to the shopkeep and then buy them back with a different character to trade. You know, there's just a lot of different mechanics in genealogy that I'm kind of wondering how people will react to in today's modern setting if they haven't had a chance to, you know, download a ROM of genealogy and apply the English fan translation patch. So there's going to be a lot to see here. You know, I remember feeling this exact way in 2017 with Echoes because I was really nervous that a lot of people weren't going to like some of the Gaiden-esque features. So with Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, there were a lot of fans that didn't really like that game because it was a little archaic. It had some of the antiquated stuff and, you know, it was just, it had its own feel and quality to it that I don't think a lot of people really appreciated after all of the progression of the series up to that point. So to kind of go back to that, I don't think a lot of people were too stoked about that. And of course, you know, with the graphics and everything, some people had their own thoughts on that. And that actually scared me because with Echoes, I didn't want a situation with Shadow Dragon to happen all over again, where fans were really not happy with that game. Because with Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, that kind of led to almost the end of Fire Emblem, if you really think about it. Shadow Dragon came out, it really didn't do well. Then we didn't even get the other remake that was using basically the same engine, you know, it's also another Marth game, uh, New Mystery, that was Japan only. And then finally we had one last Hail Mary with Awakening from the developers and they actually felt like that could be the final game in the series if it didn't do well as well. So Shadow Dragon almost kind of marked the death spiral of Fire Emblem had it died. Although Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, they are fan favorite amazing games, but I don't think that they sold that well either. And so that kind of was the beginning uh, stages of that, I would say, too. So with Echoes, I was really nervous that, that another situation like that would happen, where fans just did not react well to it, wouldn't sell well, and then the series would kind of just repeat the same pattern as before. But thankfully, that didn't happen. But I just, I remember that feeling worried about some of those features and Echoes being so different, because although some of the Fire Emblem games do share very similar mechanics, we are getting to the point now with these remakes where we're starting to touch on some of the very vastly different mechanics in the series, and so to see how fans react to some of this stuff if they've never experienced it before is going to be quite interesting. But judging by the fact that Genealogy is such a fan favorite game, I mean, if they just stay faithful, do an incredible remake with the levels of polish that they did for Fire Emblem Echoes, I could see it also being a smash hit. So I, I hope that's going to be the case. We're going to have to see what happens with that. As far as other remakes that could be likely or other projects that they could be working on if they're not Genealogy of the Holy War related, which I don't see why, considering this is the 25th anniversary. Um, it could also be a remake of Fire Emblem Binding Blade. You know, that's a game that we never got here in the West. Roy is a very popular Smash Bros. character. That one would really make sense. But considering the fact that they've been so faithful and in going in chronological order with the remakes, I just don't really see them skipping past genealogy right now and going to that. I definitely want to see that in the future, but I just don't think that that's going to be the case for this one. A lot of fans also speculate this this could be a, a Path of Radiance or Radiant Dawn remake, um, which I think would make sense in the context of having that game be on the Switch, because I know so many people wish that it was. I mean, even in like, you know, the, a virtual console type of situation, uh, a lot of people would love to play those games, especially because they're so hard to acquire these days. So, and I think, you know, graphically, obviously they fit with the home console approach because they were home console games back in the day with GameCube. But like I just said, I don't think that they would skip over so many games just to remake those right now. So we'll have to see what happens here. Another thing to comment on if this is going to be a genealogy remake is it'll be interesting to see how much they have to change and how much sort of happens with the story and some of the darker elements of genealogy, especially in, you know, current year, what they're able to get away with as far as the ratings go and, you know, if they're going to have to obscure some of this stuff or even censor it for it to be here in the West. Uh, I'm a little nervous about that, to be honest, because there's stuff like child hunts and things like that in those games that uh, I, I don't know if that's going to fly today. I don't know if they're going to be worried about stuff like that. Maybe they'll have to come up with like different acronyms that kind of refer to those events that are not, you know, that. It's definitely going to be really interesting to see what happens with this title. But the other thing to talk about is, you know, if Echoes was announced in January and released in May, then I could definitely see there being an announcement trailer during E3 this year, and then a release of this genealogy remake, Echoes Shadows of the Holy War, or whatever it would be, later this year. So I think it's very, very likely now that uh, we could be on the verge of a brand new Fire Emblem, and we didn't even know it this entire time. And with 2020, you know, that year kind of, it's such a messy blur that 
I feel like that went by really fast. It really doesn't even feel like we're getting to the two year anniversary of Three Houses yet. I mean, there's still a lot more that I need to do with that game personally. So uh, it's really weird to be here in this hype cycle position again, but it's also very exciting because I cannot wait to see what they have in store for us. And uh, I hope you guys are just excited as I am too. That's gonna wrap up this one. I mean, we can speculate more. Be sure to leave me comments in the comment section with your thoughts. That's just kind of where my headspace is at and what I've been thinking about in relation to this. Uh, I'm gonna be trying to make more content in the coming days, so I hope you've enjoyed my recent content here. I'm gonna be trying to do more YouTube shorts too because that's a new uh, kind of a format for YouTube that I kind of want to play around with. I think it's pretty interesting. I'm also going to be uploading my content to other video platforms like BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey, and so on. So if you have accounts there or you've been considering it or you'd like to learn more about that, be sure to look into that for me. YouTube is kind of a scary place these days. They're really censoring a lot of stuff and I don't know, it's just not very cozy to be on this platform as a creator. I love YouTube, but I just, they've been making a lot of bad decisions in the past couple years. So I'm definitely gonna be uploading my content elsewhere and kind of trying to grow my audience there as well. And I may even start producing some exclusive content for those other sites as well to uh, you know give people more of a reason to go look over there. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Slash the thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. You can also join our Discord server and come chat with us there if you'd like to be on this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. See you later.